now we're back on the record in the matter of the people of the state of Michigan versus Israel Lewis Gooden. And this is file number 22-21179FH. Um, Ms. Underwood, were you able to speak with Mr. Gooden? I was, Your Honor. All right. And Mr. Gooden, were you able to read and review the pre-sentence report with Ms. Underwood? Yes. Yes? Okay. Are you um, satisfied with Ms. Underwood as your attorney and the advice that she's given you? No. No, you're not? Okay. Um, no. Why are you not? Because I, I, I sent her motions to have her to file motions. She haven't filed none of my motions. So, Mr. Gooden, Mr. Gooden, let's talk about that. Um, because you entered a plea, so today we're here for sentencing. And there was an agreement to sentence you to the low end of the guidelines no more than 12 months. Now, once you, so was there a motion regarding sentencing that you wanted her to file? Yes. What sentencing motion did you want her to file? I wanted to file a vacation the sentence doing to procedural default because the court had ordered that I come in on the 14th of April and the prosecutor had no good reason for not to bring me in on the 14th, which is violating my 14th Amendment, my due process. According to was that West, according to People versus West at 100 Michigan App 496. In the state's uh, unauthorized delay in sentencing, a defendant deprives the trial court of jurisdiction to sentence. A trial court cannot simply postpone a sentencing and retain jurisdiction except under the most limited and unusual circumstances. Okay, when was your sentencing delayed? My sentencing was delayed April 14th. I was supposed to come in April 14th. That's what my PSI is marked down for, it's being sentenced for April 14th, being sentenced April 14th. Right. And um, let me look. Um, the judgment of sentence. Yes. All right. It looks like you were scheduled originally for sentencing on April 14th, and you weren't brought in. So we I wasn't brought in. A I wasn't brought in and I wasn't contacted at all. Right. I wasn't because, contacted at all. Because, uh, yes. And then we, so we were able to re-writ you for today. And yes, but that was so, his fault. Um, sir, it, was, it wasn't the court that did it. It was the prosecutor's responsibility to bring me in. Okay. And that didn't happen. All right. Um, and it didn't happen, but... You are incarcerated, and I, I do find that a delay in sentencing at this time was not prejudicial to you, so I will deny that motion. So, Mr. Gooden, did you have an opportunity to read and review the pre-sentence report with Ms. Underwood? Yes. Okay. Um, Mr. Gooden, um, now I understand because Ms. Underwood wouldn't file the motion you wanted that you just made on the record. Um, that you're not satisfied with her advice or her as your attorney. Um, but so Mr. Gooden, I'll ask you first, do you wish to explain or challenge the accuracy or relevancy of any information in the pre-sentence report? The pre-sentence report was, I mean, they got all these different charges on here and everything. You know, there was a charge of that's fourth habitual when I was in my meeting on the second habitual. And they were saying the charge on the fourth habitual. But they was recommended, but the person who did the pre-sentence report was recommended that I do 17 months. So I, I, I understand that. I'm, Mr. Gooden, let me ask you something. On your felony information, you're charged with prisoner possession of contraband, and you have a habitual offender fourth offense notice. And in that it I was supposed to have let me finish. Habitual. I'm talking now. I'm talking. Okay. So it states that on or about February 8th of 1995, you were convicted of the offense of controlled substance delivery manufacture, less than 50 grams in the 30th Circuit Court for Lenawee County, or no, Ingham County. On November 16th of 2007, you were convicted of the offense of home invasion first degree in the 56th Circuit Court for Eaton County. On November 16th of 2007, you also were convicted of assault with intent to murder in the 56th Circuit Court for Ingham County. So that's three, one, two, 
three. There was all those. Was Hold all on, I, I'm not done. Um, let's see. And then um, on November 16th of 2007, you were convicted of the offense of weapons, felony firearm in the 56th Circuit Court for Ingham County. So on 2007, you have three convictions. And then in 1995, you have one. So that counts as four actual prior convictions. So you do have a habitual offender fourth offense notice. But they always ran together. It doesn't matter. They're second, separate convictions. So they're, it's correctly stated. It doesn't matter if they ran together. They're separate convictions. So I understand your point. I was but trying, I was trying, no, it's, I was so it's correctly, together. it doesn't matter. It's correctly stated in the pre-sentence report. All right. Do you have um, anything else you wish to challenge? No. No? Okay. All right. And it's confusing. So because sometimes when you get charged... You have different cases and you plead to different things and you get sentenced at the same time, but they still count as separate offenses. Okay. All right. They, so, they ran it all together. Yeah, they did, but there's still different charges you pled to. So that's how we count them. So is there anything else you wish to explain or challenge the accuracy or relevancy of in the pre-sentence report? Uh, No, that would be all. Okay. And I know you started to mention something about the recommendation, but um, Mr. Gooden, the agreement for what you would be sentenced to is still in effect, okay? Yeah, because I really feel because she said that she no, recommends. No, MDOC always recommends whatever they want, but I am the one that decides what your sentence is. And at the time you took a plea, Miss Underwood had stuck had set up a deal that you would receive that 12 months or less. So that's still in effect, no matter what MDOC recommends, okay? Yeah, it's supposed to be five months, five months on the minimum at the lower end of the guidelines. Right, yep, yep. So, all right, Ms. Underwood, is there anything that you wish to explain or challenge the accuracy or relevancy of? No, Your Honor. Um, Mr. Gooden, uh, brought his concern about the uh, failure to have him here on his original sentencing date to me this morning, Your Honor, and I said I would bring it to the court's attention. So it was not that I was not going to do that for Mr. Gooden. Okay. To allay his concerns. All right. Okay. Thank you. And, um, Your Honor, getting to the sentencing, at this case, is well, hold on. I'm not. I'm not done with oh, that. Yet. Okay. Okay. But I, my only question was the accuracy or relevancy of anything. I don't body. believe we have okay. any others. You're All right. right. Does the pre-sentence report disclose any prior convictions in which there exists any known constitutional defect? I don't believe it does, Your Honor. All right. And the probation department in this case has computed the minimum sentencing guidelines to be five to seventeen months. Do you agree with that calculation of guidelines? I would agree with that, Your Honor. All right. Okay, so now before the court passes sentence, is there anything, Ms. Underwood, you would like to first say on behalf of Mr. Gooden? Your Honor, this is a suboxone case. Uh, there is no violence. There's no, no um uh, danger to anyone like a weapon or anything. Uh, the guidelines, as you state, are 5 to um, 17. I would hope the court would comply with the COBS. And I, the court, if the court, this is a felony conviction. So if the court sentences Mr. Gooden to the low end of the guidelines, which is five months, he will do those five months MDOC. So that is not jail time on a felony. Okay. So I just wanted to make that clear to the court that um, we would request the COBS of five months as the low end of the guidelines, Your Honor. Okay. Anything else? Nothing, thank you. No. 
All right. Now, Mr. Gooden, is there anything you'd like to say on your own behalf? Yes, since I've been in prison, I have completed a Spanish course. Uh, tomorrow, I take my eight. I completed the optical lens, optical technology class. Tomorrow, I take my ABO. I already passed the class. I just got to take the state, the state exam to pass for my ABO. I took sign language class since I've been in. I took a cage of rage since I've been in the past cage of rage. I took a violence prevention program course since I've been in. And I also would like to ask that since I've been down, if I can have some time served and maybe any restitution, anything be postponed until after I get out on parole. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, anything else, Ms. Underwood? Nothing else, Your Honor. Thank you. All right. All right. So in determining the appropriate sentence in this case, the court has considered the seriousness of the offense, your history, the principal proportionality, the statutory penalty, the cost of confinement, the sentencing guidelines, the report and recommendation of the probation department, as well as what has been said upon the record at this hearing. The criteria and reasons for the sentence are the nature and gravity of the offense, the discipline appropriate to its commission, deterrence against repetition by you and by others, the potential for reformation, vindication for law and the protection of society. It's the sentence of the court that you will serve five months with the Michigan Department of Corrections. Um, I will assess the bare minimum that I can because you are incarcerated. Um, there's $68 in state costs and a crime victim assessment fee in the amount of $130. Um, so, um, Mr. Gooden, I do wish you the best of luck. I appreciate that you're availing yourself of all the educational opportunities within MDOC. Um, that's a good sign. Now, I, so Mr. Gooden, you got five months, the bare minimum fines and costs. Um, I will be mailing to you or will email to you and they'll, they're going to give you three copies of your notice of right to appellate review. One copy, I just need you to initial and date where you mark it that you received the paperwork, okay? And then that gets mailed back to us. The other two copies are for you. If you wish to appeal your sentence, you would fill out the information on the form and mail them to the address listed on the form within 42 days, all right? Is it possible I need a time served because my citizen date was on April 14th and I waited over a month? So um, I can't give you time served because you're aren't you currently incarcerated? <laughs> I'm, incarcerated but I'm incarcerated, but they hold me past my ERD. They said the reason why they didn't let me out on parole is because I had this going on. I'm past my ERD. I've been sitting in limbo. Um, Mr. Jones. Um, he, he was scheduled for sentence back in April, but I don't think because he's currently serving, I can give him under the law any credit. That's correct. Per, That's per the why law I'm judge. giving you the, the five months and not the 12. Okay. So under the law, I just, I can't give you credit, but I am knocking off the months because it was adjourned. Okay. All right, so I wish you the best of luck, Mr. Gooden, and thank you. Thank you. All right, thank you, Ms. Underwood. All right.